money in your pocket, your money in your gloves. Um, do you remember who you were before the world told you what you ought to be? So, I swing with a law, bro, and I got a lot of it. And they did. All right, so you're fighting Charlie Leary. What are your thoughts on him as an opponent so far? Have you done any research on him? Yeah, I've done my research, bro. I don't take anybody lightly. They're mm -hmm. signing the contract because they feel they can beat my ass. So I'm gonna do my research, and yeah, he's a vet, bro. I'm not taking any. I don't take. I don't take anyone lightly. I feel like he's a vet. He knows. He knows what he's. Um, he has to do to win the fight, but everybody always feels like that until. Till my hands land. I mean, I, I just think like every time. I think yeah, I, I'm probably think he has good hands too. But like every time, I, every time I'm standing with somebody, they either keep getting their space or they grabbing, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just a swing with a law, bro, and I got a lot of it. <laughs> so how you think this fight's gonna play out? It's gonna be a fan friendly one. For, oh, oh, it's gonna be fan friendly. Um, I I don't know the guy personally. He looks like he has a lot of respect. Um, you know, we just keep it. We keep our distance. Uh, you know, we, we we martial artists in there. We're gonna keep it entertaining. I know he's gonna come in there, and I've seen his fights. He wants to fight, so <laughs> that always brings the best out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you like to fight a little bit angry, or are you okay if there's no like, um, drama before the fight? I think honestly, I think honestly, when they get when they get personal with me, then then it's it's. I think it's a better fight for the fans because I'm over there like. Fuck you. And I, I am like that anyway. It's always kill or be killed when I'm there. But, you know, and if there's a little disrespect factor in it. Then, yeah, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more, um, I guess. What is that? Dark Fire. side. Dark, dark side, side in it, you know? Like the out. fucking, just the kill. and even Like mal the malicious intent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but as soon as the ref pulls it off, it's all, you know, it all goes away. Bro, I haven't, I honestly even haven't even put thought into when I was going to stop doing it. Just okay. like how I never put thought into when I was going to fight. I right. just fell into fighting. This is the chapter of my life right now. Fighting is my vocation. Oh, it's always, it's always, it's always great to fight at home. Like mm -hmm. for me, like it's always the thing, like the, the, my last fight. Right. Like when I walked out and I felt what was given, I was like... This is why I am. Yeah. This is why I am the person I am because all this love that everyone has given to me since I was a fucking kid, they still give that to me. And I'm still able to do as I did as a kid. I can do it as an adult. Be a martial artist, fuck your blood sport, be in the kumate, <laughs> all that, all that stuff. Or the, the um, seatbelt. Seat belt. Yeah, just always wanting to be in a kumate and like, even now, I'm just like, um, wrestling and you know play fighting and now i do stunt work like i'm just in you know doing all that being doing stunt work being a stunt man and shit like it's it's all i'm just able to stay active and stay healthy and being a martial artist and fighting has been able to let me do that so when uh fighting at home though bro that's that's everything it's always when they say home field advantage it's just it's, it's it's do you feel that when you know you walk out yeah, I, I I feel that when I'm not even with Hawaii, I feel them. Mm -hmm. That's like I look at that camera and I feel it through that. I'm like, there they are. We here. Right. You know, we here. You know, we know what's up. But now it's like it's in truth is, um, truth is inevitable. You can feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, oh, all of that. I'm just like this. 
I'm excited to feel that again. You know, I'm always excited to feel that because I've been in enemy territory too. Mm-hmm. And I still take it in like that. I don't expect them for chill for me. I'm going to take out their countrymen or their local or their fighter. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like you, you got you to gotta know how to feel both, bro. Right. So you can embrace. You got to embrace both because, you know what I mean? It's going to, it's, 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 I'm here for a good time, bro, not a long time. <laughs> You're going to have fun doing what I do. Yeah. That's why they call me the kid, bro. You always got to just be like, Childlike, not childish. Do you think the kid comes out more when you get a fight in front of your home crowd versus when you're fighting an enemy territory? Uh, I mean, I think I double down more on my kid, like my my kid personality, because that's something that's made me me. That's okay. something I've traveled the world with, right. being that way, being adventurous. Like when a kid does something, they just, they, they just look at it. They don't want to judge. They don't have expectations. They just want to go on an adventure and take whatever they want in. Right? And so like that's how I take everything. Everything's an everything's an experiment for me, bro. So I can be focused on the now, not oh I gotta do this or oh, thinking about the future or thinking about my past. If I'm always doing an experiment myself or in life, then I know I know I'm always focused on the now. Like I'm always in here, in tune with me, in tune with what I'm doing at the present moment. And that's that's something I always strive to do every day. And being a martial artist helps me do that. Especially knowing I get to fight at home. Yeah. It just gets me more grounded, bro. So you posted to your Instagram about remembering who you are, but before forgetting who you, where you came from or something like that. Can you elaborate on that or maybe tell uh, me that quote? Uh, the quote was, um, do you remember who you were before the world told you what you ought to be or you know what, what, what you should be? And it's just, I think growing up through life, you know, we get caught up in what everybody else is doing and what what when we compare and like when you're in kid bro like all you like do is wake up and like have fun bro you know like when you're an adult you we wake up and then we just think about our problems the problems around the world and like kids wake up they ain't thinking about that shit bro they like be happy <laughs> they don't care about politics they don't care about any of that and you know what i mean like that's the that's the thing we forget bro like we gotta live in the now i'm not saying be irresponsible and not not pay attention to what's going on but you gotta you gotta just know what you can control and like kids give the biggest example of that they can control their happiness and what they can be in the right here because they cannot do anything else in in that realm of you know wherever well however closed off it is so they're just always looking to make the best of their surroundings and i always i always just have that like that kid like intention and take it in that way okay yeah. so did you ever lose who you were for a little bit trying to find who hey you we all i be? think yeah i think we all get you know there's times we get mm-hmm. lost in the sauce bro right you know and then like you know it's just um we we tend to distract ourselves. you know and it's easy it's easy to just be easily distracted you know and um, we get that's where you gotta know when you're around good people and when you have good friends or you just have bad influences <laughs> you know, and like the real, the real people around you that are there, that are there for your well-being. And I realized that growing up through this, my fight life and all that, like it's having a tribe, being around people that's tribal, like, like all my coaches, everybody, everybody in my tribe, we all, we just all have an agreement with each other. We don't have nothing through contract. There's no pen and paper to sign, you know, because our word is our bond like you know we're not then and and in the end they're not there for my money they're there for my well-being mm-hmm. you know and as long as we can all pay our bills and 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 take care of our responsibilities then money's not really the issue right if if we're a tribe it's if the all everyone in the tribe can flourish and be happy right and that's that's what i surround myself around and that's what i have here at home what do you think about trash talk in mma these days um just your thoughts on it i mean everybody's got everybody's got a brand to sell and a job and a job bro mm-hmm. you know what i mean for me i just collect data i observe i sit back i'll be talking smack but if you're gonna talk we're definitely gonna talk you know and i'm gonna get my point across and i'm gonna show you how to treat me but other than that like hey people it's entertaining bro yeah so you kind of like i grab the fucking popcorn <laughs> ha and I mean, because in the end, they don't want to fight, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, they ain't they ain't fighting me. And if you're going to trash talk me on Instagram, then you better just step back and you do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless that's your business and that's your brand that we're going to say, but I'm still going to show you how to treat me. But you're not going to disrespect me Very up much. in my face. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I like it. I like the trash talk. I definitely know, like, 
a lot of the people ain't they you know they trying to sell mm-hmm. sell stuff and I'm just like yes yeah, if it ain't authentic then I don't really care okay yeah but you do like it if it's authentic that yeah oh yeah because there's some shit you know like there's respect that needs to be shown there's boundaries that need to be instilled and every man and every woman is different you know and how they how they instill their boundaries and how what what type of respect or disrespect they have huh? yeah yeah and then what do you think about like because this is a good one for um you know you got the affiliation with the diaz brothers is it yeah. sketchy turn here yeah you got the affiliation with the Diaz brothers, and you know I think they're the ones who originated the gangsters and martial arts in MMA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so what yeah. So what, what do you think about these uh, guys claiming to be gangsters? Number one, and then what makes a real gangster? Hmm, good question. Right. I think I think you said it yourself. Like, if you on gangster, bro, you don't even need to say you are. You know what I mean? Like, everybody want to know you a G. A G's a G. You don't have... A G don't be telling anybody he's a G, bro. You just fucking are. Oh, yeah, that, that's G, bro. G move, like... A fucking lion doesn't tell anybody he's a lion, right? He just fucking walks and it is. You know? And, like, that's, like... You, you just got to be real. Like, Nick and Nate, they're real individuals. And that's some, definitely something that they taught me in the fight world, to be real. Like, but I'm a... Like, my personality is totally different. I'm a very open guy you know what I mean I, I like to connect with people I, you know and like that's a totally they have totally different personalities even when it comes to fighting mm-hmm. you know I can smile and they don't but that doesn't mean that I fake and they, they're real or I'm real and they're fake that's just how we that's how we operate and they appreciate that I'm real about that mm-hmm. fucking yes that's the fucking nice guy right. <laughs> Nick's like Yancey's too Yancey's too nice you know like, like but they don't but they appreciate that I'm real you're an asshole bro be an asshole don't, don't be a nice guy and then around the corner you faking you an asshole, bro. That that's just bullshit. That ain't that ain't gangster. Mm-hmm. That ain't G. So these gangs, these guys again who are kind of claiming to be gangsters, do you um you all part of it isn't just being like a crazy guy, but also kind of being like a respectable man as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. I I think a gangster knows how to. I think a gangster will show people how to treat them. You know what I mean? Nobody gonna... You can say what you can say, but nobody gonna end up coming up in my face and disrespecting me. It almost sounds like you're saying you you, you don't need to really say it as much. If you're a gangster, it speaks for itself. Yeah, kinda. yeah, of course. Everything speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. I don't need to tell anybody I'm a fighter. I just mm-hmm. do what I gotta do. You know, I, I, I like that when people know me, they don't know me as a fighter. I'm Yancey, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm a human, bro. Like, if we, have, we have an understanding. So, yeah, being a being a gangster is just being a G, being smooth. You know, and not... And not gang, to me, gangsters are smooth. They operate, They you know what I mean? They know how to operate when they need to operate the right way. And even in good and bad situations. So... What's your favorite moment from your UFC career? Fuck, bro. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I like all my moments, bro. You know what I mean? I cherish them all. Like, I just, like, there's nothing that really sticks to me, like, I mean, the most popular one would be, you know, Oliveira. Them. That's the. But I remember that's the most emotional I've been. Mm-hmm. You know, those, those moments is like moments to where like, like fuck yeah, I know, you know, like it, I know I'm ready for war. <laughs> you know, like I fucking I'll die in there, bro. I'm ready to die, and like those things I just know, like I don't ever want to do outside of my profession. Like you know, mm-hmm. just. I think, um, yeah, my favorite my favorite moments is the ones that, like, bro, when I got to fight fucking Eves Edwards, mm. that was fucking dope. He's a legend, bro. I look up to that guy so much. I was, like, a martial artist thing. and just, like, it, man. Like, oh, fuck. I got to fucking... That was, like, if I got to fucking spar Bruce Lee. You know what I mean? I'm you know, saying, like, I just saying that's how much I respect that, that dude. I was watching that fool in fucking... High school, you fucking kill G's in the smoothest way. I was like, oh, this guy is just tight as fuck. And then I got to fight him, and I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you everything, you know? And I was so emotional. I was like, he hit me. I'm like, nothing, bro. Like, because they just, I was just so excited. I had so much respect that I wanted to give him my best. Yeah. And even if I lost, like, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have cared because I went in there knowing that I came in there for fucking bang with somebody I would look up to. 
Okay, and then you might have just answered this one too, but I feel like there's another way to ask it, which is like, you know, do you ever have a moment that you think about it, like from time to time that always kind of pops back up in your head? Like maybe like, damn, I did that or, you know, something like that? Yeah, I mean like the Oliveira fight. Okay. You know, that one like really, really, um, I've been put in those situations in life and like, I'm, like I just, it's, it's a good life lesson. I don't like getting hit like that. Just because I like, I know I can take hits don't mean I like doing it. And I always watch that fight and I'm just like, ah, bro. Like, you know, I'm just like, fuck. We lost some brain cells on that one. <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah. I was That's just, the one that you kind of think about from time to time? Yeah, because like, you know, right when I finish him, I was like, where's my fucking flag? Mm -hmm. Give me my flag, bro. It's just I want it for represent Hawaii because I was like, rah, like, you know. I was just so, I was just so happy. Even when I won in Brazil, you know, because, like, when I fought um, Eric Silva, or even Trinaldo, when I had that fight with Trinaldo. I remember one time I was fighting him, and, you know, have you ever heard that saying, like, oh, you get the, the senses knocked out of you? Mm -hmm. I remember I fucking, he hit me with his overhand laugh, and I bang, and I was like, oh, shit, my daughter, and I was like, oh, well, I'm in a fight, bro, what the hell, like, you know, like, it literally just switched me out, and I always, I never forgot, I never forgot, like, that, that feeling when I fight, and even when I was fighting, and I lost, like, I got rocked, and I lost my legs, I was like, oh, shit, and in my head, I'm like, oh, shit, fuck my legs, jujitsu, and I just fucking, like, I remember thinking those situ, like, in my head, talking to myself, and I watched the fight, and I'm like, oh, that's fucking hilarious, mm -hmm. and those ones, those ones is, like, the ones I always remember, okay. yeah, those, those are some good ones, yeah. and then, um, your last fight, fighting in Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, what did that mean to you, was that, like, a, a really special moment for you, I know that, you know, you were released from the UFC, or maybe you didn't renegotiate your contract, and, yep. You maybe were unsure for some time, and then just for it all to play out the way it did, you know, like signing with Bellator and then fighting in front of a home crowd, yeah. getting a win. Um, like, what did that mean to you, and how does it I, feel that you accomplished all that? Uh, I'm I'm happy. Like, I'm happy that you know, like how how things lined up mm -hmm. for my path. Because everyone's always like, like, bro, oh, yeah, what are you gonna do now? Or you know, everyone, family, friends, fans, just genuine, generally worried. Yeah, and then for me, I was just like. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm headed that way. Like, you know what I mean? I'm headed forward, bro. Like, you know, I just, like, I don't, like, worry about what I cannot do. Like, I know I cannot, like, I can I can still fight. I can still be active. I can focus on my health, my joy. And that's the things I did. And then everything just kind of aligned. Like, I was like, okay, fuck. I lost. I didn't get my, I didn't get to renegotiate. So I was like, oh, wait, I still feel like I can fight. Let's see where we can, where where I can go and where it can take us. But other than that, I was just, oh, I'm going to just try and stay healthy and get better. And then it just aligned. You know, and I didn't, I, I worried, but I wasn't stre stressing over like, oh, I need to fight, I need to fight. If I couldn't have, if I wasn't meant to fight, bro, then that was the, that was the end of my chapter. And on to the next chapter. You know, and I'll figure that out when, whenever that, whenever that happens. Until then, bro, I'm still fighting. The kid is still here, bro, <laughs> and it's still getting, and it's still, and I'm still getting younger. <laughs> and then, so when you got that win, you just were hungry for more after that, huh? Yeah, hungry yeah. for more, bro, and I ended up, um, I ended up getting uh, my retina detached mm. in my eye. So that was like a, no, a whole other um, series of recovery and um, adapting. That you had to go through. Yeah, adapting and appreciation, bro. So like now my my eyesight's never is never the same. Mm. It, it's never it, it, it was, but there's so much worse. You know, every time I have a shitty day and shit doesn't add up for me, bro, I just fucking go like this. I'm like, fuck. Some people are fucking just totally blind, bro. They can't even see. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? I'm like, ah, yeah, my fucking life's fine. Like, you know, like, like I just. It keeps me accountable and I just don't, I don't need to complain about shit. I can process it. I can take it all in. But everything that happens to me, I have to, I, especially if it, it impacts me in a negative way, I have to bring, bring positive out of it. I have to look at it. I have to bring something out of it. I have to learn from it. It's not every person I, every person I meet, every person I meet comes with a lesson. Just like everything I do has to have a lesson because I'm my best experiment bro, and I have to learn something every day about it because I don't want to exist in this world I want to live every day and be in be in that moment and 
until I don't know how long that is, because I ain't fucking, a like, hundred years is a blink, bro, compared to however fucking long old this world is, like a hundred years ain't shit, bro, like, so, I just want to be able to, to live it the best I can. Okay. And then I got a fun last one for you. Yeah. Um, the first word to come that comes to mind when I ask you about these four fighters. Um, oh, okay. Let's see. Max Holloway. Just one word. Fuck. Oh. Or two. Max Holloway. Fucking dumb man. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm playing on. That's my boy. Um. Um, Max Holloway, bro. What? That's a fucking good one, bro. Um, d- ah, dedication, bro. The man is dedicated. You know when he okay. when he when he look at something, bro. He fucking looks at it. Like, I can do it, and he goes in and he fucking goes hard, and he don't care what anybody else say about him he's like I'm gonna do him I don't care whatever you think you think I run faster than you seen you bro watch <laughs> big dad bro and just I appreciate that man bro <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. dedication for Max Holloway yep dedication okay and then BJ Penn oh man ah EJ Penn, bro. I have a good story about that guy, but, mm-hmm. um... <laughs> fuck, bro. I... Wow. This is hard question, bro. That's really good. Too shit, bro. Too <laughs> fucking shit. Um... Just from all the interactions I've met with that man, he's loving, bro. Mm-hmm. I've only that's all I've ever experienced from him, you know, like in the sense, no matter what stories mm-hmm. anybody says or sees or what he's done, like comes down to all human. But that human is a loving individual, bro. I've never felt like you know, he he's always, always shown you love, yeah, bro, 100%. Like, you know what I mean, from when I wasn't someone to even when he knew me, or you know, and we got acquainted, like. I always appreciated that. Like I could always, he gave that off. You know, when I met when I met him and I was just a kid, and he grabbed me and he fucking, you know, he gave me a fucking one of those uncle hugs and I was like, oh yeah, like you know, I was like mm. fuck, like you know, I was like, oh, and I always that was something that I always resonated with. And I was like, oh, I can, I know I can make people feel my shit, you know, like feel how I feel mm-hmm. and my peace or my love, and I was like, that's something B J Penn. You know, reminding me of that my dad always did for me too. Okay. That's why it like, impacted me. Yeah, like, yeah. and he's a lot older, so. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, my, my fucking my father make me feel like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and yeah. then uh, Nick Diaz. Oh, goat, bro, martial artist. One of my favorite, one of my favorite martial artists, bro. Savant. Mm-hmm. A savant martial artist, bro. Like. He just says shit, like, they could just, just, like, I'll tell you a story, bro, like, so when I first started going with Nick, training, 2011, and he fucking, we was at, like, Whole Foods or something, and Nick's just fucking always just in his head, bro, just shadow boxing, boom, 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 you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and just fucking going, and we, fucking, we see it so much, it's just Nick doing Nick, and we, we all do it, too, we just all fuck around, you know, playing horse game, but, like, Nick would just get into it and just fucking start going. And one of these dudes is like, bro, Nick, what are you doing? He's like, I just threw 35 left hooks. What are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, oh, sh-. I, I was just listening, but I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bro. Nigga training. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like people that go to church, right? You don't need four doors. You don't need a gym to train. But that man is just always training. And man, his mind can't stop, you know? So it's in martial arts and... Whatever he whatever he gets into, he dives, bro. And it's like, yeah, he's a savant, bro. Would you like to see him maybe, like... 
yes. give some of his brain back and coach or something like that? I mean, I would, I would love that, but everybody has a job in life, bro. I don't think Nick is meant to coach. Mm. I think we were meant to learn from him and mm. how he steps. You know what I mean? Some people just lead, bro. You know, and we have to learn by how they lead. And some people are just better coaches. I don't, I don't think Nick is one of those guys that don't get me wrong when he teaches fucking his all dope shit. But I don't think that's one of the dudes that, you know what I mean, wants to like go and teach others and they have a school and like go and sit down. I think he just want to be competing and be in jujitsu and, you know, guys learn from him and then he'll he get his black belts around and just learn like that. And then, so I think you... Like said yes a second ago. What did you think I was gonna ask you? If he wants in a fight, yeah. yeah. So you'd like to see him fight again? Oh yeah, I would love to see him fight again. You know, in a healthy environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you a part of that last training camp for him at all? No, unfortunately, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. So did I you hear really anything know. through you? No. No, I didn't really hear hear much, and even but me. You think like, he, has, he can show a lot better than what happened because it seems like there's a lot of people think there's an undisclosed injury because of some of the pictures, you know? Yeah. Where it was, yeah. he was looking shredded and then yeah, he yeah, kind of yeah. showed up maybe not as shredded. Yes. And they think that he, he you know, is undisclosed injury. Do you, so you think he has a better, more to show? Yeah, I definitely yeah. think, I think, I think, I mean, Nick will always, Nick and me, that's the thing, Because he still look good. I just want to say that. Yeah, he still look good, but yeah. it wasn't the Nick, like everybody, you know, everybody, like fucking always the time that like, he's, he was, he's, if he's in a healthy environment, he fuck, I like, I want him to keep competing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like from what I've seen, everything's getting better with him. Okay. But I don't get into politics or health or so. I don't really know. You know, just when I see them, mm-hmm. it's I just connect and I'm his brother because the world is asking them everything else. All mm-hmm. I care about is their well-being, and if we connect, then we gonna connect. Let's right, we'll stick there till till we till we gotta do what we gotta do and go where we gotta go. Okay, so Nick Diaz is the goat. The goat, um, bro, yeah. And then Nate Diaz, my brother, bro. Yeah. That's one of my other, one of my mentors. That's definitely taught me so much in life and throughout the game. You know, like that's just someone that's like still like even in COVID, bro. He just fucking still was helping me however he could with you know finances and shit and like those types of things. It's just like unspoken of and he just told me how to be real in this in this game like he he's one of the guys that took me to one of his fights you know in UFC to show oh this is this bro this is how you do this shit right and he's not telling me to act like him he's just saying oh no read the room you know collect data bro start taking notes (laughs) here ain't like and freaking learn from those situations and always be you be real one thing I always appreciated after I won on fight and he was cornering me, he grabbed me and said, like, hey, bro, rep your shit. And you're from Hawaii. Rep that shit. Like, he's just real. You know, he just wants me to be real. He knows that I'm all about a law. That's something I always perpetuate. And that's something I could always be and I'm never going to ever not be that. I'm going to be somebody you not. You know what I mean? Don't let the world, don't let the world change you. <laughs> yeah, in that sense, you be real, bro. And that's something I always... Always appreciated about that guy, and I'm gonna always, and I always gonna be like that. He's always gonna be a brother, a mentor, a teacher to me. And even if you don't want to be a teacher, sorry, bro. You just do shit that fucking makes me want to learn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then um, kind of a random one, but um. Oh, but oh, but Nate, um, the rebel, bro. The rebel. Rebel. You know what I mean? <laughs> rebellion. If anybody's gonna shot a rebellion, it's gonna be him. Right, he's rebel. You can see that he does what he has to do because he knows his worth. Okay. Yeah. And um, Hoist Gracie. Fuck, bro. <laughs> that fuck is the man, bro. Oh, bro. Yeah. The man. Hoist is the man, bro. Yeah. He's. I mean, yeah. Like he just showed what fucking jits was all about, you know, martial arts and how to fucking survive. Yeah. And I was just. I mean, of course, all the Gracies did, but. You know, for us, like, n- um, North American wise, was only that's what we was exposed to. It was the internet, so we never know. So he was the first one. I was like, oh, that's tight. <laughs> yeah, I was like, bro, that's fucking tight. And then from there, he just ventured off, and I got to, yeah, the jiu jitsu. I started with karate, but martial arts is my longest relationship in life. I'm still, I'm still that. You know, I'm 35 now, so it's 30 years of this relationship I have, and. It started with karate as my roots and foundations, and it branched off with like jujitsu. Like, jujitsu is like one of my favorite. It's 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's something that it doesn't discriminate. Right. You know, fat, skinny, one arm, <laughs> two arms, no eyes. Right? You, you can you can do it any time of the day. Like it's not it's not something you can have an injury and still do it. You know what I mean? Old doesn't matter, bro. Jiu Jitsu so so and fucking hoist size wise, big, small, like hoist showed that and then that started the seed. Oh, what is this? You know, and looking into it and venturing mm-hmm. off and just all of the, all of the all of the graces. It's badass, bro. Crone, I'm, it's my boy, 